So what's up, everybody? Joe here, BudgetBoss.ca. It is Wednesday. It is April the 15th. We are in day 18 of my COVID campaign for financial awareness, and we are still on the subject of life insurance. So today I'm going to talk about the life insurance process itself. Uh, the, process, the process itself used to be quite intrusive. They used to actually have to take a cotton swab from your mouth. You have to get blood and urine, get your vitals checked. It was a whole process that actually was quite invasive for the client themselves. Uh, recently, actually, it's become less invasive. In fact, you don't even have to meet with anyone to get a life insurance policy, uh, depending if you are healthy or if you fit the criteria, age, whatnot. So I want to take people through the no medical portion of life insurance process. Uh, typically, uh, before, what you would have to do is answer a questionnaire uh, health questionnaire going over various uh, ailments that you may or may not have uh, and then you would answer yes or no to those no being good meaning no I do not have this or no I do not have that in terms of health uh, ailments and then at that point they would schedule medical for you to get the doctor or um, a paramedical to come to your house a nurse to take your blood and urine and take your vitals and uh, basically weigh you and then ask a few more questions. So that process with the nurse took about an hour. Uh, the process with the agent or the advisor themselves, my, me and my clients would take about half an hour or so. So overall the process uh, to get the application in place would take about an hour and a half. At that point, you would have to wait probably about a month for the underwriters to review all the findings that they have and then issue a decision based on that. Now they've actually gone down to the process where it can be approved immediately, uh, even for amounts such as $1 million worth of life insurance, where that was completely out of the question uh, even just years ago. So I want to take people through the no medical process and the questions that get asked, just so you can see what you're up against if you are applying for life insurance. And the big thing about it is I want people to understand that it's gotten super easy and super cheap. Uh, it's a very competitive market. And what has actually happened is that life insurance companies have realized the money that they're spending on certain underwriting processes, and they understand that they're wasting some money on certain people who don't technically need to be underwritten. That includes young, healthy people. Why waste money sending a nurse to someone's house when, in fact, we know whether they're healthy or not uh, just by the way they answer the questions. And if they answer them truthfully, then we'll pay out. If they don't answer them truthfully, then we won't. Uh, so that can be figured out after the fact. But for the most part, most people uh, in their early life are healthy and don't need to go through the whole paramedical practice, which can often be an annoying practice uh, for someone who does not want to get blood taken or doesn't want to give a urine sample and whatnot. So first things first, I want people to take a look at uh, Canada Emergency Response Benefit. This is the CERB, and if you qualify for this, please apply. Lots of people have applied, millions of people. One caveat that I want people to understand is that this is the $2,000 a month for four months that our government has implemented for people who have lost their job due to the coronavirus. Uh, the one thing about it is that it is taxable income. Now, I will warn you that uh, next year, when you file your taxes, this will be added to it. So if you do the four months, you're adding $8,000 to your income on the year. Now, given your situation, it may or may not affect you that much because if you've lost your job, then your income will be lower as it is. But keep in mind that there will be a portion of this that will have to be paid back to the government. So my recommendation to you would be to save a portion of it uh, if you can and actually put it aside so you can pay the tax man come next year. Again, it's not tax-free. It is taxable income added to your income on the year. So be weary of that. Understand that. If you need the whole $2,000, you obviously need that, and then you can worry about taxes later. But my recommendation would be to put a little bit of money aside. Uh, I would say 20% of that. So save the $1,600 for yourself. Put $400 away from the government, and then you can at least be ready for tax time next year. So that is my recommendation in terms of that. You can also download the final uh, combo expenses worksheet, and I've been promoting this all along. Get people to understand exactly what uh, they are up against in terms of their budget and getting that organized. So that's an important thing, and I want people to start doing that. And I'm uh, releasing this worksheet for everyone to take advantage of to make sure they understand exactly where they stand on a monthly ba basis and get their budget in order. 
So in terms of life insurance, uh, one thing that people need to understand is that the big key factors that they look at is here. Age, gender, personal and family medical history. Those are big ones. Age and gender tend to be the biggest ones. Uh, smoking status is huge as well. Smoking status will affect your premium massively. Oftentimes, it's double for smokers. Uh, weight is a big factor. So if you are overweight, they take your body mass index into effect. Uh, lifestyle. So if you do risky hobbies, that includes, you know, like skydiving, bungee jumping, uh, mixed martial arts, stuff like that. If you travel to dangerous parts of the world, uh, marijuana smoke is actually come into play as a non-smoke and does not affect your application. It used to be a um, an automatic decline or a rated policy, meaning you would pay extra if you're a marijuana smoker. Now, oftentimes, marijuana smokers do not pay any extra. Uh, depends how often you smoke it, so make sure that you are following the guidelines in terms of your prescription or what you do in terms of use. But if you are smoking marijuana four times a week or less, uh, oftentimes you are a non-smoker and it does not affect your application negatively. So that's something that you need to understand. But age, gender, and smoking status tend to be the biggest ones. Uh, men pay more than women because men tend to lead, uh, lead riskier lives. This is all based on the mortality table, so how many people die in a certain age bracket, and they will base the application on that and how you answer the questions. But the rates, so the price for your monthly basis is based on mortality tables. And that is scientific evidence of how many people per year die in that age bracket. So more 20 year olds die than 19 year olds or whatnot, or the amount that do. And pricing is based on that. And that's why when you're younger, it's much, much cheaper because more people as you get older pass on from chronic conditions or illnesses or accidents and injuries. So that is the huge, huge factor. Uh, more men pass on than women because more men uh, often die from uh, chronic conditions such as alcoholism or uh, risky behavior such as car accidents. Uh, more men speed, more men uh, actually take more risk in their regular day life. So that is why men pay more or uh, cost more on a monthly basis, pay more for their insurance. So let's get right into an application. So I am going to jump into my company's application. This is Kenna Life, who I represent. Let's jump into a term life application for a single person. So the big thing about life insurance is you have to be 100% truthful. And the reason why you have to be 100% truthful is because it won't pay out if you are not. So you think you will have insurance the whole time, but you, in fact, you will not. So you're better off to admit more information than to say less information because the reason being is we can always find you some form of insurance but if you think you have insurance and you in fact gave incorrect information you will pass on and it may not pay out so you gotta be ex extremely truthful tell as much as possible paint a picture of your story to the underwriters so they can understand exactly how healthy or unhealthy you are and then it's the advisor's job to find you the best insurance possible given your current situation so that is huge uh, so I will go through this application so have you ever been treated for or had any known indication of the following so basically how life insurance applications work is they go over parts of the body and explain to you exactly what condition you may have pertaining to that part of the body. So it starts off here. Have you ever had conditions for your heart or blood vessels? And that includes heart disease, heart attack, chest pain, TIA, uh, transient ischemic attack, stroke, aneurysm, heart murmur, abnormal ECG, abnormal cardiac tests, irregular heartbeat, blood clots, excluding high blood pressure so that's all one question in concerning the heart so if you've had any of those you're gonna answer yes and then you will actually be sent to a different form of application for people who have conditions pertaining to the heart and that goes for any of these conditions for any of the parts of the body so brain or nervous system disorders such as epilepsy seizures multiple sclerosis optic neuritis muscular dystrophy motor neuron disease memory loss dementia parkinson's paralysis numbness or head injuries so that's a lot to take in but if you've had any of those you say yes immune systems such as AIDS or HIV 
lungs such as cirrhosis, or sorry, lungs such as tuberculosis, emphysema, COPD, uh, sleep apnea, asthma, excluding childhood asthma, or non-smokers with milder seasonal asthma. So milder seasonal asthma, if you only get it a couple times a year during the fall and spring, something like that, or if you had it as a child uh, and you don't have it anymore, it's a big difference. Uh, liver diseases such as cirrhosis or testing positive for hep B or C. Kidney diseases such as blood protein in the urine, uh, bladder, uh, excluding resolved bladder infections, so bladder infections, excluding resolved ones, uh, pancreas, esophagus, intestines, and colon, uh, such as colon polyps, Crohn's, or colitis. Now, this is where I would say yes, because I have ulcerative colitis, so I wouldn't qualify for the no medical insurance. I would have to, in fact, go through a medical. So if you answer no to all of those conditions, which the majority of people do, you move on to the next one. Major depression, bipolar, self-harm, or schizophrenia. Now, oftentimes, uh, mental uh, disorders that require medication, you can still qualify for traditional insurance if you are on your medication, and you must stay on your medication if you're prescribed it. Um, oftentimes, people with self-harm uh, uh, situations, they will be declined and have to go for a go through different underwriting to get them insurance. And I've had several uh, situations with clients like this. If the issue is resolved or if it's something that happened when you were a younger person, and oftentimes that does, I mean, we've all had uh, situations like that, thoughts of whatever. Uh, the big thing is about is that if it's resolved and or if you're prescribed medication, you can traditionally or you can get traditional insurance uh, depending on it. it goes on a case-by-case -case basis so the big thing is to be truthful your advisor will be able to help you get any insurance you want and don't be ashamed of actually admitting uh, that you have had a mental disorder uh, the big thing about it is that let's release the stigma on that it's something that everyone goes through uh, stress anxiety and there's different levels of it uh, there's nothing wrong with actually uh, admitting the fact that you've had a mental uh, disorder in your past so I don't feel that people should hide from that I feel that people should embrace that and try and do better because mental health is health it's physical health it's mental health it's all intertwined into one so any mental uh, health condition including stress or anxiety which required hospitalization so stress and anxiety that don't require hospitalization hospitalization or time off work or school you don't need to mention but if it did require hospitalization or you had to take time off work or school because of it you should mention it or any treatment or medication uh, in the past uh, two years for anxiety or depression or stress so lupus rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis uh, I can't say that word, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, I'm sorry, or any bone, muscle, or joint condition which re currently requires daily prescription medication or treatment with injections. So these are bo bone or muscle conditions where you require treatment. So this is medication, injections. Uh, if you're currently working with a doctor to resolve these problems, then you should mention it. Diabetes, gestational diabetes, abnormal blood sugar or sugar in the urine. Any form of cancer, so cancer is a big one, but if it's resolved cancer, you could still get traditional insurance uh, if you have been tested clear for a long time, uh, so oftentimes five or more years. Uh, leukemia, lymphoma, tumor, benign or malignant, dysplastic nevi, or any moles that require monitoring or which monitoring has been suggested. Drug or alcohol abuse or where you've been advised to stop or reduce your consumption. So those ones there are the basics for qualifying for no medical insurance where you don't have to go through traditional underwriting for uh, blood, urine, and paramedical services where they take your blood pressure and such. Question two, in the past, have you had any biopsies, CT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds, excluding for pregnancy, endoscopies, or any non-routine tests for which any of the tests have been done? Or have you had any tests done, routine or non-routine, where you're told the results were abnormal? Or do you have tests scheduled in the future? So if you have sketch, uh, tests scheduled in the future, oftentimes they will wait for that test to the results to come out. So if you have a heart test next month, they won't write you insurance until the results come from that heart test. So that's an important thing to understand. So have you had abnormal tests in the past five years? And if you have had abnormal tests in the past five years, you have to explain that they're abnormal and now they're resolved, that kind of thing, right? If you haven't had abnormal tests in the past five years, you'll say no and continue on. 
this is the high risk activity part. So flying as a pilot, and this will be flying your own plane as the pilot itself. Uh, so flying in small planes, uh, unless you are a uh, pilot for a commercial jetliner, that's a little bit different. But if you're a pilot flying small planes as a recreational activity or as a job, uh, then in that situation, you have to uh, disclose and you will have, oftentimes you will have an exclusion for dying from a plane crash or they may rate you rate your policy make it a little bit more expensive motorized racing so this is drag racing snowmobile car racing motorcycles hella skiing snowboarding backcountry activities so this means where you're going outside of the normal ski hills so into backcountry up in the top of the mountaintops uh doing that kind of thing um Rock or ice climbing, which to me is not appealing whatsoever, terrifying in my opinion. Scuba diving, any other high-risk activities, none of these apply. So let's click no on all these and continue on. Have you resided in Canada for the past 12 months? Are you a Canadian citizen or permanent resident? Yes, I am. So I'm going to provide my birthday. We'll pretend like we're writing this application on me. I'm born June 27, 1984. I'm a male. I'm a non-smoker. Okay, so let's verify eligibility. Okay, so I am eligibility. So let's start this application. We are going to do it on my device. We are signing this application in Ontario. Let's go with Joseph Francis. That's me. I am male. I'm going to do my SIN number. Okay. Country of birth, Canada. I'm born in Ontario. And Canada and Ontario is where we're writing this application. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. And then, okay, so let's continue going on. So we'll take a look at the quoting process itself. So I'm going to apply for $500,000 worth of insurance, and I'm going to apply for a 10-year term policy. $24.75 a month for 10-year term uh, for $500,000 worth of coverage. Now, that is really cheap uh, when you think about it. That is a very, very cheap process, a very, very cheap policy. I can change that policy to a 20-year policy and calculate the premium. For 20 years, it would be $37.80, which is also very cheap as well. And mind you, I'm 35 years old. So for a 35-year-old, for $500,000 worth of coverage for 20 years to be locked in, you're looking at $37.80. I can even lock in this policy all the way up to age 65. So if I lock this in to age 65, it would be $68.40 a month. Now that is a great, great policy, very cheap. Uh, very useful and I can actually afford that premium so th this shows you how you can actually get um, a policy for extremely cheap now when you look at those uh, questions that they ask you they are not too difficult to answer most people would qualify for insurance requiring requiring no underwriting uh, let's take a look at the health and lifestyle questions so what is my height I am five foot seven. Wish I was a little bit taller. I am 175 pounds. Past 12 months, I've had weight loss more than 10 pounds. Now, the reason they ask this is because oftentimes when you've had weight loss more than 10 pounds, it's because you were sick. Uh, so that is why they ask this question. Uh, so no, I have not. If you have had it and it was due to intentional diet, so let's say yes, how many pounds have you lost? Let's say 10, and the reason was diet or exercise, that is fine. Um, so yeah, if it is due to illness, treatment of medications, weight loss, surgery, those two things will actually have a negative effect on you. Uh, diet or exercise or lifestyle changes is fine. Are you awaiting the test, uh, results of tests? So if you've taken a test in the past and you want to see your waiting results for it, they will wait till those results come out. So I'm going to say no to that. 
Have you been advised that you have the following high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol? No, I have not. Have you experienced any health problems for which you have not talked talk to your doctor about? Do you have stirring migraines and you don't tell anyone about it? Uh, basically, if you have any health problems, talk to your doctor about it. Uh, if you have not, uh, then you should. If you have not, then you need to say yes, but this doesn't pertain to me, so I'll say no. Have you had more than two weeks off work or school in the past two years for health reasons? And uh, this doesn't have to be due to pregnancy or for a bone or muscle injury from which you fully recovered. So if you pulled a muscle, then uh, don't worry about that as long as you're fully recovered. So I'm going to say no. In the past 24 months, have you been admitted to a hospital for more than 24 hours or had surgery or been referred to a specialist for any other reason other than a non uncomplicated pregnancy, vasectomy, dental surgery, laser eye surgery, cosmetic surgery, or muscle joint injury from which you fully recovered. So have you been uh, admitted to a hospital for more than 24 hours basically in the past two years? And if so, why? Uh, so those are the reasons why you could say no to this, pregnancy, uh, cosmetic surgery, muscle or joint vasectomy. So I'm gonna say no to that. This goes into biological family, so that's mother, father, brother, or sister. No cousins, no grandparents, just your immediate biological family. Have any of them been diagnosed with heart disease or stroke before they were 65? Or cancer before they were 65? Polycystic kidney disease, Huntington's chorea, or cardiomyopathy? So I'm going to say no to that because no one in my family has had that. Within the past 30 days, they have been treated by a healthcare provider for anything other than a minor condition for which no follow-up or arrangement has been contemplated other than an uncomplicated pregnancy. Obviously, when you're pregnant, you're going to see doctors more often as checkups, so don't worry about that. So I'm going to say no. Uh, past five years, what describes my tobacco uh, use or cannabis use? Uh, so you either use it or you don't, and this is all about the past five years. Currently not using these products, and I, but I have used them in the past five years. Occasionally, I use these products weekly or daily, or I have not, so I have not. Drug or alcohol use, so you can do the average on a weekly basis. So if you have uh, two a day, that would be 10 per week. If you have uh, one a day, that would be five per week. So that would be the category I fall in. The past 10 years, have you used drug or, drugs or narcotics that have not been prescribed to you? So these are the hard things like cocaine, heroin, LSD, stuff like that, other than cannabis. Uh, so I have not, so I'm going to say yes. If you have used those uh, or I'm going to say no. If you have used those, you have to say yes, and oftentimes your application be rated. But the one thing I want people to understand is that it goes in a case-by-case -case basis. So if you use drugs when you were a teenager and now you're an adult, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just say yes, explain your situation, and you'll be fine for the most part. The past three years, have you had driving violations or had your license taken away? So no, but if you've had like DUIs, you have to mention that, speeding, uh, License taken away due to speeding, stuff like that. So you need to mention that. And travel is a big one. If you've traveled to dangerous parts of the world, uh, so you need to mention if you've gone to the Middle East or uh, parts of Africa, including uh, the Caribbean, Haiti is the one country in the Caribbean that you need to mention. But yes, if you've traveled outside the uh, EU, Canada, the Caribbean, excluding Haiti, uh, Australia, New Zealand, or do you plan to in the next 12 months? So given our current situation, I'm going to say no to that because we can't go anywhere. Past 10 years, they've been convicted of a DUI or refused to provide breast sam sample or any criminal offense in Canada, uh, in or outside of Canada. So I'm going to say no to that because I have not. And have you ever had an application declined, postponed, or modified? I will say no to that. So you're going to provide your healthcare provider. So I'm going to say Dr. Javago. Okay. And I am employed or self-employed. It also it mentions a bunch of uh, apple, uh, occupations that could be dangerous. So working with munitions, cannabis, working at heights as a construction worker. So uh, boom workers, structural iron workers, or bridge workers. Uh, working with explosives, logging, uh, professional athletes, entertainers, singers, comedians, firefighting, or any military duties, you have to mention these. So none of these apply to me. Um, why am I applying for this? I'm applying provide income for another person uh, to provide expenses at death and mortgage or debt cancellation. Standing balance of the mortgage, $250,000. let us say that. Okay. And review and sign. So for that, that is all the questions that they have. Now I'm missing one part and that is the beneficiary information. So when you choose a beneficiary, I would recommend that you choose someone. 
uh, is directly associated with you. There has to be an insurable interest. Oftentimes, husband, wife, quite simple. Uh, you want to make sure that all your loose ends are tied up. You want to provide income for your loved ones should they need it and you pass on early. So make sure that you're choosing your beneficiary wisely. Make sure you actually choose a named beneficiary and don't leave it to your state. And the reason being is uh, insurance is taxed at the estate level, but if you name a beneficiary, it goes directly to them. So if you leave it to your estate, what happens, it goes into the estate and then at that point it gets taxed. So you want to make sure that you are bypassing the estate and going directly to the beneficiary. So always name a beneficiary. Keep those updated on a regular basis. I see people that have ex-wives as beneficiaries or ex-husbands as beneficiaries uh, or someone that's even passed on as a beneficiary and you want to make sure that that's updated as, uh, as much as possible. So I'm including in this in uh, my post today, uh, a post I released in February of 2018, five must-haves for personal financial plan. Personal financial planning. The first one I mentioned is life insurance. I can't stress it enough. Every family needs life insurance, so I include in this post. The other ones include emergency funds, uh, disability critical illness coverage, which I'll get into uh, over the course of the month. Uh, register education savings plan, so that's your RESP to save for your child's education, and then retirement savings is a big one, of course, as well. Uh, I am going to include in this post, of course, step four, how to retire relevant life insurance and when you should get life insurance. And these are three posts that I've written that pertain to life insurance itself. What I'll include as well is Dave Ramsey's post here. How does insurance work? What is life insurance and how does it work? It's a great post by Dave Ramsey, just so you know that I'm not the only one giving this kind of advice. And also uh, Investopedia's post on getting life insurance in your 20s and why it pays off. So that is my post today about the life insurance process. It's not that complicated. Again, just be truthful as possible. What I want you to do is actually check out the Facebook page. You can see all the videos here on the Facebook page and all the links to everything you need to do in terms of my COVID campaign for financial awareness. Also, you can find me on LinkedIn. My Facebook link is tagged in my, uh, or not LinkedIn, Instagram, sorry. My Instagram page and my Facebook link is tagged into this Instagram page right there. So you can uh, link right to that. And I'm on Twitter as well, so you can find me on there. You could also go and find the whole catalog of videos this month on YouTube. Uh, so all 17, which will be 18 videos now, are there on YouTube. And you can reach me at budgetboss.ca slash contact. Book a meeting. Sign up for my email list. Uh, it's a great way to connect with me directly. Again, sign up for your COVID emergency or your uh, Canadian emergency response benefit for the coronavirus. People have lost their jobs to coronavirus. And again, remember, people uh, will be taxed on this come next tax year. So I want you to understand that completely. Let's check the markets before we go because they weren't open when I started. So now they are open. We are looking at a negative day in the markets today. We're giving back some of our gains yesterday. Not need to panic. What is going on is that there's a reaction to uh, government spending and also the stimulus package. What we're seeing is that we're giving back some of our gains. Again, we could go down a little bit lower. That could be a situation that happens over the course of the next month or so as follow to this campaign goes on right now or the coronavirus goes on right now. But we have had seen some gains over the past two weeks, 15% specifically uh, back to the good, still down about 20% overall from our market highs in early and mid-February. So I want people to understand that if they're changing their investment balance, talk to an advisor, make sure that they know what they're doing and make sure that you are invested in the right things and you understand what's going on right now. I've spoken with several of my clients about their investments right now and sort of explain the situation and what we're going to do. We're playing the sort of wait and see game to make sure that everyone sort of understands what's happening right now and we're not making drastic moves unless they need to be made, but we're doing them with uh, caution and we're doing them with all the facts and information that we need to do them so thank you guys for joining in today if you want to actually look into seeing if you're eligible for a traditional life insurance shoot me a message the process is easy you can actually do it over the phone you don't need to meet in person uh, and you don't need to actually meet a nurse in person which right now is actually very useful because of social distancing regulations and uh, the coronavirus and what's happened with that so shoot me a message at Joe budget boss uh, is the social media or Joe at budgetboss.ca is the email and you can go right to the website budgetboss.ca and actually book a meeting with me or a contact with me you can DM me on all my social media platforms platforms. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you about that. So have yourself a great day, guys. Peace.